Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans <laughs> and welcome to another exciting Wednesday night stuck at home isolation central uh, to uh, talk nerdy to me as I speak. Clearly people are stuck at home because they're signing in already. How good is that? Michelle is joining us. Absolutely fantastic. And it's uh, uh, going to be a very, very special show tonight with everybody. Five, five people already. We're less than two. Oh my God, they're rolling in like oranges. Anyway, so g'day, Carol from Ballarat, who's enjoying a bit of more freedom than we've got here in Melbourne. So g'day, Greg, as well. Um, tonight is a very, very special show, as they always are. And with me, of course, I'm with my two excellent lads, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight? Very good. Yeah, good, good. All right. Okay, it's nearly 9 o'clock, and I had a feeling this conversation might go a little bit longer than uh, 9.30, so I wanted to get to it pretty quickly. So... Um, uh, I wanted to have a bit of a natter, just a bit of a, a bit of a chat as always. There's uh, nothing right, there's no right or wrong answers. It's just uh, all about uh, life, the universe, and everything, and just opinions and all the rest of it. So I'm gonna have a bit of a chat about Star Trek. Good old Star Trek, mate. So um, there's a whole lot of stuff going on with Star Trek at the moment. It seems to be that someone's pulled the uh, was it the cork out of the bottle, and they're just producing shows left, right, and centre uh, regarding Star Trek. Now I just want to put up a bit of a quick presentation about something to do with Star Trek that I'm not sure if most people have been picked up on, but I'm just going to chuck this up there, and we're going to go from here. So, uh, so the bottom line is this is effectively the timeline for Star Trek, the TV series and movies. Okay, as you watch them. So, uh, so this is sort of a bit of an idea as to how the whole thing kind of works. If you haven't got your head around it already, and some of the significant changes that have occurred uh, in recent times. So we start off down here at this end. This is first contact. I call that the, the secondary part. That's when the Zephyr and Cockrum and the Vulcans and all that all sort of meet each other and whatever else. Then you get into Enterprise. You get into Discovery, Season 1, Season 2, right? This is it, this is in chronological order, by the way. So you get Enterprise first, Discovery. You've got the original series, the animated series. You then get the films, Motion Picture, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock, Voyage Home, uh, Final Frontier, and The Undiscovered Country. Then there's a break in terms of timeline, okay? Uh, then we end up with the, the new stuff, like you know, Next Generation, DS9, Voyager. We've got the movies in there, Insurrection, First Contact, the first, you know, the primary uh, timeline, Generations, and then up here you've got Nemesis, okay? Now, for all intents and purposes, Nemesis is at the end of the timeline. Nothing else happens after that, right? So what happens then, if I can get my thing to work, is that according to the timeline that has been announced, Romulus is destroyed by a supernova, okay? That happens after the Nemesis uh, event, right? Now, of course, what happens from there is that, what's his name? Nero grabs his ship, I think it's the Narada, and heads back right back in time to this point here, all right? So we've gone right, right, right back, and, of course, what he does he do? He destroys Vulcan. That then puts everything on a brand-new timeline that runs down below here. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they... Uh, the Vulcans have to go to another planet, which I think is called New Vulcan. Someone can correct me on that, okay? But effectively, from that point there, this is right at the start, of the, almost like the original series is wiped out. Um, everything follows right down until we get to Picard. So you could actually argue that everything else that occurs up here doesn't actually happen at all. And the reason for that, and of course, after Picard, you've got Discovery Season 3, right, which hasn't uh, been on TV yet. So we get back here, right? So we've got the new uh, timeline that's going on. And the question I wanted to, or just wanted to bring this up, right, is that the planet Vulcan appeared in all these different areas in the, in the animated series and it appeared obviously in Search for Spock and uh, the Voyage Home and all the rest of it. Clearly that can't happen anymore, okay, because Vulcan as a planet doesn't exist. It's been blown up back here somewhere, um, which means we now have to be talking about new Vulcan. And, of course, if you're going to make such a significant change to the timeline, you have to wonder, well, what's the flow on effect of all that how does that impact everything that happens at all these other shows that are occurring up here and of course on top of that you've got all these characters who are from vulcan who appeared in the movies and you've got amanda who spock's mother appeared in the movies and the tv series well she died we know that for a fact and of course with the vulcan characters like tuvok now what happens if back here when the vulcan planet was destroyed his grandfather was killed off or his father was killed off and he didn't exist anymore so what that actually tells us is that if you wanted to, you could actually remake every single show from the original series onwards 
because of the butterfly effect. There's been a change somewhere and you don't know what the flow on effect will be. And you could actually argue that there are, um, there are certain things that occur and you go, well, hang on. If you change the fact that Vulcan was destroyed and all these people got killed, is everything completely different now? So all the next gen, all of the movies, everything that followed on from that those incidents could be completely different. And the only thing that we know does continue on is that Romulus still gets destroyed in the official timeline. We know that Roy, Riker and Troy actually do marry. Data dies. All this occurs in Nemesis. And Seven of Nine exists. But everything else back up here, all through the movies, all through the TV series, Next Gen Voyager Death, all that could be completely different because of the flow on effect uh, from that occurred back here. So if you wanted to, you could completely remake all those entire shows, all those movies, right, and just make all those respective changes. And I thought, I just wanted to bring that up. So, uh, uh <laughs> No, no, it's kept me awake the other night. So uh, it was, uh, and yeah, and Savik was gone. So you uh, you look at it from that point of view, and you go, which characters, uh, which Vulcans appeared in the shows, and would they still be alive? I mean, you got no idea. Like Amanda clearly isn't. So what happens then? Spock doesn't have a, have a mother anymore. What's the deal with that? So uh, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because it kept me awake the other night, and I was thinking, oh yeah, timelines, yeah, yeah, this is how it all works now. So for all intents and purposes, the Picard timeline is now the correct one, and all the rest up here uh, are now incorrect. So. Um, there you go. Make of that what you will. So, what are you Mr. Daggy, Mr. Daggy, Mr. Daggy, I have a question. Yeah, mate. So, where do you put in uh, the new Trek films? Uh, because I know that you said that Romulus yeah. gets destroyed and he goes back. Uh, yeah. Into darkness and beyond. They now set the brand new timeline, which is at that point right okay, there. So the brand new okay. Yeah. So they, because for that, for all intents and purposes, the original series no longer exists. Right. Yeah. The original series from the sixties is gone. And Star Trek, the new films, because it started right when Kirk and that all met each other, um, that is now the start of the new timeline. Vulcan's destroyed and everything now takes off uh, from there. So uh, there you go. Oh, look at this. Um, yes, Michelle, uh, there are valid points, and I have put way too much thought into this. I know it's it's the nerd thing. What can I say? Hey, so there you go. Um, Greg, Picard can't be set in the Prime Universe timeline primarily because the Star Trek series of films has already gone back in time and changed everything, and he makes a reference to the fact that supernova that a supernova destroyed Romulus, okay? So it doesn't make any sense because after that, Nero went back in time and changed everything, which is what has happened with the new films. So, um, so yes, I did think of that too. I thought, well, actually, for all intents and purposes, it's all brand new now. So uh, there you go. Um, uh, oh, here we are, the Kelvin timelines. There you go. Now, Colin is probably well more on top of this than I am, but I can't see how if you've got three – new films and you produce a new series which is set in the future how that can be on two different timelines it makes no sense they've deliberately rebooted everything so it must be completely different so uh there you go uh here we go set in the prime timeline see daniel that doesn't work it doesn't make sense so uh, i understand it but it doesn't make sense when you sit and think about it why would you deliberately reboot everything and then produce a tv series which goes on to a different timeline it makes no sense at all so um there you go and there can be multiple time like look these people are just writing stuff in they're completely losing it oh my god the trekkies are going nuts out there so uh there you go very good all right so this actually brings us back to the original discussion so I to, <laughs> i'm sorry but that was my my nerdiness uh so yes as i said there's no right or wrong that's just how i interpret it and uh, there you go so there's a whole lot of stuff going on at the moment in regards to these tv series now i don't know if you guys are on top of what's happening so in recent times, I think CBS has just run out and said, you know what, just produce a shitload of shows, right? So clearly Discovery's got its third season coming and set way in the distant future somewhere. Uh, good old Picard had its first season has now been signed on for two more seasons, so they're in the process of making that, right? Um, there's a show called Short Treks that's currently out there. Very hard to see at the moment. You had to have, like, Netflix, and it's not even available on Netflix. No, it's, no, it's, it's available on CBS, but they're, at, they're in JB Hi-Fi right now on Blu-ray. I saw them today. Cool. No worries. It's mainly for Discovery, you know, sort of like filling in bits for Discovery, but they've actually mm -hmm. now started adding in stuff for Picard uh, as well, which I thought was interesting. There was a show in development, which I don't think has progressed anywhere, called Section 31. Uh, that was with um, Michelle Yu. I can't pronounce the second name. Michelle Yo. Yo, Yo, thank you very much. Uh, and, of course, they've just announced Strange New Worlds where they're going to take Pike and Number One and uh, and make a show out of that, So, uh, which is kind of nuts. And then, of course, you've got Lower Decks, the animated series, the animated comedy series, which is like... Yeah, whatever. So uh, they seem to be just going completely, it's like spasmodic. And uh, as I sort of discussed with Colin, funnily enough, I don't understand why they're overlapping shows. So why the timelines are so close together. So you've got Discovery, 
Um, and you've got Strange New Worlds almost bookending each other. And then, of course, the original series, what's left of it, uh, comes into the um, into that timeline as well. So hang on. I'm just going to look at what people have said. And, okay, so, Daniel, so the producers have stated the show is in the prime timeline. So that is just stupid, right? That means they're actually going against their own continuity. They've created, they deliberately rebooted it, and now they're going against it. It makes no sense whatsoever. That is just insane. I'm not disagreeing with no. you saying the stupid. The producers clearly haven't thought this through. Go on. Yeah, because if the producers are doing the movies and they haven't watched all the source material, then obviously they've mucked up there. Yeah. Uh, it's the same as Star Wars. You have to know all this, all the history before you can go and write something. Otherwise, you're just throwing everything into chaos. Yeah, I and you're that. right. I've chucked in the correct bait, and the fishes are all they jump jumping out everywhere. Jeffro, yeah, that makes me think. I mean, I know that Star Wars has a um, a group that manages all the timeline functions and everything like that to make sure everything's consistent. Uh, I mean, I wonder if Star Trek has a similar sort of uh, group that sort of manages their uh, timelines and everything. Clearly not. So uh, because yeah. when they produced the Star Trek film, right, the 2009 movie, they said, oh, that's no, okay, we'll just change everything. We'll just go right back in time and we'll blow up Vulcan, right, and we'll just go from there. And, of course, Into Darkness and Beyond, Vulcan doesn't exist, right? Now, you can't just pretend that that didn't happen and then produce a TV series that's clearly set after that. And then just say, oh, no, we're back on the original time frame, which means that those movies don't happen. They didn't exist. And, of course, that makes no sense. So as a, as a viewer, you'd be thinking, well, what am I supposed to believe now? Did Vulcan get blown up or not? So um, I, as a viewer, I'd be pretty shitty about that, actually, because I, I a lot of fans were going, all right, okay, so they've gone back and they've yes. reimagined the whole thing, blown up the planet. All right, it's all different now. Amanda's dead, all right, and the Spock's mother's died. Now we're saying she's not dead or she didn't die. So that makes no sense at all. So... Uh, yeah, my, um, my question is, I know that when um, Star Wars gets mucked around, I mean, the whole uh, internet hears about it. I mean, the voices are loud and clear. I mean, I don't seem to hear much complaint from the Star Trek fans. Maybe they're more civil about it, but, uh, I mean, when there's timelines that are getting askew, um, nobody seems to be minding it too much. Yeah. I mean, you could argue that, of course, if you're on the prime timeline, so you take the film, for example, um, uh, what's his name? Nero's blown up Vulcan, right? But then you eventually get past Nemesis and the supernova is still going to blow up Romulus anyway, and then he'll just come back again. So you're in this circular sort of thing. But i got to say, that's just that's just cockeyed. That makes no sense whatsoever. But it did, sorry, PPS, hold on just quickly, but it did explain because like in Picard, Seven of Nine and John Luke seem to know each other which makes no sense because they never met in the TV series. But if there's an alternative reality, who knows? They might have been the best of friends for years and years and years. We just don't know. Anyway, go on, dude. I was going to say that um, because different companies are producing these shows, they're not necessarily talking to the others. So Prime, Amazon Prime is doing Picard, so they can do and start wherever they want to. Um, uh, Netflix is doing Discovery, and they started mm. wherever they wanted to. So mm. if they're not all CBS um affiliates and, and all that sort of thing then they're probably not talking to each other and don't care about the timelines they're probably just trying to tell shorter stories that sort of work that way um yeah and how far so, how far the card past uh voyager it's it's jeez oh, uh, that's a daniel because I, I know it's after nemesis it's like a 15 or something 16 years after nemesis yeah uh, so in theory, you would think you would think that you know the Voyager crew would be kind of famous in that area, so you know Picard obviously knows Janeway and and the rest of those sort of mm. the rest of the crew. So um, for them to know each other wouldn't be mm. that unlikely. So here's a question for you. So they let's assume they produce a new TV series, and there will be other TV series, is it right? So they say, okay, this is set after um, the original series. Can you imagine like a TV, uh, like the producers going, all right, so what timeline do we follow? Does Vulcan exist or does it not exist, right? And what if they said, yeah, we'll go with the version of the movies where it doesn't exist, where Vulcan was destroyed, they lost all the academies and all that, Amanda's dead, we'll just go with that one. Do you reckon, you, and, and like the fans are watching and going, hang on, this makes no sense. I mean, why is there this conflict uh, of these two, like this, I can't sort of, it doesn't gel. And because somebody was saying, oh, hang on, we're following the timeline from the, um, uh, which I think they call the Kelvin time timeline, from the from the films so or if there are new movies that come out what do they follow so and i agree with you completely it's complete rubbish that one show is on like for example uh amazon and the other one's on netflix and this is like why can't they all work one big happy family at least the star wars are all in the same bloody place so that kind of helps so um 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, very frustrating. Um, and you're right. Uh, yes, Dave, right. you're right. And I was in Nemesis. Sorry, I had to read that one because I, I was because she gets called Admiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are right, Colin. If they're producing all this stuff, um, it could be very could get very muddled very, very quickly. So, and you do have to sort of wonder. It's like, well, hang on, what are they trying to achieve here besides making a shitload of money? And before we went to air tonight, we were actually discussing between the three of us. And Jeffro had said, and I totally agree with him on this one, that one of the reasons why we think all these shows are happening in the first place is that Paramount, CBS, whoever it is, has said, "Gee, Star Wars is like romping through all these movies and new TV series. We've got to catch up." You know, oh, we'll turn to this dude over here. Dude, he's, we want five shows like now to compete with what Star Wars are doing. And I think that's actually a very valid point. Jeffro, did you want to elaborate on that, mate, at all? Yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking back to the, uh, the 1970s when Star Wars came out. That was the whole reason why we saw a Star Trek in the motion picture. So they managed to squeeze that in sort of a couple of years after... Um, uh, Star Wars had come out and then before Empire Strikes Back. And as you mentioned, the next Star Wars movie actually pulled off the same trick. It was squeezed in between Empire and Jedi. So, you know, when there's that low moment where people are going, well, I've had my Star Wars fix, so I need more fix of something, then um, Paramount goes, yeah, we've got something for you. And here it is. So uh, very much a case at the moment uh, with... Uh, you know, sort of um, Star Wars in the cinemas finishing up. Uh, you know, they're uh, they're trying to get those people to uh, to jump on their wagon for a change. So the question would be is to us dedicated hardcore Star Trek fans, right? As far as they're concerned, does Vulcan exist or does it not exist? Is there Amanda alive or is she dead? I'd be curious to see if there's a camp that says yes, I follow the films. And what they've done with the timeline or this camp that says, nah, I just disagree with the movies completely. They don't, the movies never happened, regardless how good they were and how successful they were. I'm following the TV series timeline. And so when you get to Picard, and Picard is the only series that is set after Nemesis. Um, you know, so, and they make, sorry, I make, yeah, it is the only series set after Nemesis, which making deliberate references to Romulus being destroyed. Okay. So we know that there was an impact there regarding what happened with the timeline. Um, so, which one is the correct one? And I'd be very, very curious to see uh, what fans think if there's like a complete divisive line. Uh, Jeffrey, you mentioned earlier about Star Wars. One thing that Star Wars doesn't have for the most part, except for one or two tiny examples, is time travel. So that's the reason why you can sort of, uh, it doesn't get as muddled as uh, as it is. But clearly when they're making Star Trek, the film in 2009, they said, no, no, we'll go right back in time, change everything. It's the brand new whatever. And they could just remake everything from then on with this, these changes, as I mentioned earlier. But if Picard is apparently set on the prime timeline, that just throws that in um, that completely in the air and it just, like, almost laughs at the film's faces. So uh, there you go. And I agree with you, Daniel. Prime timeline all the way. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly on that um, thing. But I'm been, being a bit of a continuity buff, as I am, the, the rules of movies and TV shows usually is that the current version of whatever is correct okay so if you make a film which states this and then you make a sequel to that film which states that and they contradict each other the newest version is considered the correct version okay using the star wars examples did greto shoot first the answer is yes because in the special edition it was it superseded the original uh, a new hope version right and that's how the law of the, how these things works because you could say the people making the new product are well aware of the old product and they've said no we're deliberately going to overwrite what the previous product said, okay? So up until uh, Star Trek Beyond, which was the most latest film, even though it was set way back wherever, that timeline is considered correct because in the span of continuity, that's how it would work. Now, if you're producing Picard and it hasn't indicated either way, they haven't gone to Vulcan in Picard yet, it's to say, oh, yes, does Vulcan exist? Yes or no. You could argue, even regardless of who says what, that Picard is actually set on the alternative timeline, for that reason, because it is the most recent um, product, if that makes sense at all. Does that make sense, guys? It does. I've got a question for you. Um, from memory, and, you know, I could be wrong, but with the uh, the Star Trek movies that they made not so long ago, the, um, the executive producers that are now on all these TV shows, people like Avika Goldsman and Roberta Orkey, all had a very big hand in those movies. So do you think it actually benefits the fact that, those guys that worked on those movies as producers are now producing the television shows? 
Yeah, clearly no one's going to let a good story get in the way, right? Um, and I can see them saying, you know, don't worry about it, just do it and be done with it. I'll answer a couple of questions here. Um, Michelle, books uh, with the Star Trek books, they never followed any particular canon, right? And books at the bottom of the list. So because we're talking about a media product, TV shows overrate books, overrate, overwrite books, and films overrate TV so overwrite TV shows as a general rule, okay? Uh, but so books... If, if they can slot in elements, they'll usually fit in, but if they're overwritten completely, then they just don't happen. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, Jeff wrote, yes. So I think they've just looked at it and said, you know what, it doesn't really matter. We'll just like, if there's a contradiction, who cares? Now, having said that, there's a lot of stuff in Star Trek that actually fits in really beautifully. And Picard was a good example of that where they made references to things in the past. I mean, bringing Hugh back with the same actor, Jonathan DeLarco, uh, mm. that was fantastic. That was a brilliant idea. That worked really, really well. So it's funny that, one part of the production group will say, no, no, fit, fit, following continuity is very important. Or another group will say, no, nah, stuff it, we'll just make our changes. And, of course, you have to think about it. When they went back and made the 2009 film, they made a conscious decision to reset everything, right? Now, whether people agree with it or not, it was done. They blew up Vulcan, right? They reset the entire timeline. And at the time, people accepted it. Well, and some people were a little bit, oh, okay, it's a bit iffy, but... Um, but and that's how it works. And there's no reason why that should now be just cut off and just discarded, and we just pretend it didn't happen because it doesn't make any sense. So, ah, uh, oh dear, uh, you care, Dags? Uh, yeah, thanks, Aaron. Yes, this sort of stuff does keep me up late at night. So uh, there you go. Um, okay, you guys say something. I'm just going to read some things here. I love comment. the way that uh, Bill managed to sandwich in a, uh, a Doctor Who comment there. So, you know, <laughs> what are you saying? That the Peter Cushing Doctor Who movies are, are canon? So, good on you, Bill. Yeah, Squeeze yeah, sorry. Uh, Doctor Who quote in amongst the Star Trek uh, discussion. Uh, you're correct. They rebuild the race. But the thing is, all these people got killed when Vulcan got blown up. They didn't save the whole 100 billion, thousand, whatever were people on board. A whole lot of people got killed and Amanda was one of them, right? So wherever she appeared, following on from that, we're looking in the anim uh, animated series and in Star Trek 3 and Star Trek 4, it can't happen because she doesn't exist anymore if you follow the logic of what they did with the timeline. They made a point of killing her off. So if she died, how many other people died as well? And, of course, then you've got to start wondering, well, okay, how does that impact all these storylines that we've seen throughout all these series and films? Now they all branch off in different directions because that character didn't exist. And I'm using Tuvok as an example as I did earlier. If he, if his grandfather didn't was killed, then he can't exist. So what happened to the whole Voyager timeline? So uh, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Good stuff. So anyway, getting back to the original point, uh, yes, they're going a bit spazzo on the whole um, making these TV series, and I'm freaked out by the whole Strange New Worlds one, uh, as we discussed in the Austric um, podcast a few days ago. I think they're doing it to deliberately tone down the violence of Discovery. Discovery was a bit too different, and maybe they thought, oh, okay, if we use... Pike and number one, they can make it more Star Trekky. I did read that they were making it very episodic, so instead of having to watch an entire se season to get the story, mm -hmm. they just one episode at a time, which I don't think is a good idea. I mean, I think why Picard worked is because it was one long arc that just went through all 10 episodes. So I think if you make things episodic like they did with Next Generation, if you remember the first two seasons of Next Generation, you can watch them in any order you want because they don't nothing links to anything else. And uh, I would argue that's not necessarily the best way because people do like stories that continue the whole way through. So that's that's all well and good, but it depends on how long the, the series goes for. For ten episodes, yes, it's got to be an arc. But for twenty two episodes or you know a full season, it's it's going to be too hard to keep up with that. Uh, yeah, I think with, yeah. with with all the characters you got. Look, it it mostly worked with Battlestar when they did that again, but not many other series actually make it work as well. Yeah. Uh, so, and if if these if these guys aren't on the same pages as, as the films and that, then it probably won't gel. It makes no sense, does it? Eh? So, and if you're gonna, and you're right, Ange, no more Cyborg. Yeah, that's a bit of a contentious one. Hey, eh? good old uh, Spock's uh, half brother. So, like, if you were to make a brand new TV series that's set after the original series, so not the animated series, but like a live action series, what timeline would you use? It's like, okay, we're following on. So we're not doing any more movies. Okay, Star Trek Beyond was the last one. We'll do a TV series directly following Star Trek Beyond. What do they do? Do they just pretend that those three movies never happened or that the destruction of Vulcan didn't occur or whatever else? Uh, or do they just say, oh, no, no, we'll just continue on and, um, and, and, and follow that? So it's, it's created a conundrum that makes no sense if, if Picard is actually set on the prime timeline and not the Kelvin one. So uh, there you go. I thought that was 
how's that eh? very very cool so um yeah so uh what else is there so yeah good old discovery set way out into the distant future now i reckon that'll be struggling to get an audience if that because it'd be very difficult to relate with that i mean one of the reasons why discovery was worked is because i oh, we've got klingons we've got section 31 we've got the enterprise you do so the enterprise we've got pike there's a link back to the original show but if that's no longer there and you're now in the distant future i think fans will be going well it could be called anything take this word star trek out and just call it discovery and see what happens so yeah. uh, you, might, you might find within a couple episodes they come back to their timeline because they have to for some reason they can't mm. exist in that that yeah. thing maybe you comes in and and um throws them back or you know they find another caretaker or something like that who knows yeah i mean that's one of the reasons sorry jeff i'll get any sick that's one of the reasons why i think picard was so popular because people could relate to it because they had to hold this next generation flavor the whole way through with nice little bits dropped in they go oh there's that and there's this there's that and, and of course i think they bring whoopi goldberg in for season two and whatever else so uh that's just wetting a whole lot of fan appetites which i think is kind of groovy jeffra here's a here's a good thought for you so what if picard was not made by amazon prime and it was actually made by uh, cbs do you think they would have gone in a completely different direction and tried to incorporate it into the uh, the timeline, or do you think they would have sort of maybe done the same thing as what Amazon Prime did? Well, I I mean I know everybody's writing here and they're saying, oh no no, Picard apparently is set in the Prime timeline, but there's no evidence in the show to suggest that, right? So you at the moment you could argue it's one or the other until Picard says, oh yes, back on Vulcan this happened, right? Or he says back on New Vulcan, this happened, then we'll actually know. Now, people are saying that they've read from producers and whatever else, and that's probably correct, right? But canonon canonically, there's a big word, in the show itself, it's not mentioned, right? Mm. Or if they have a Vulcan turning up and they say, oh, how, how did you feel after your planet blew up you know, 100 years ago or whatever else, then it's canonically, oh, God, and then another word, uh, it's not set in stone. So at the moment, that's why when I did this timeline, I thought, well, to the best of my knowledge, Picard is now on the alternative timeline because there's nothing to say alter uh, otherwise. So um, at some point, you would think they're going to put a reference in. It's a question of which way they go. So uh, it, it almost makes you think that maybe uh, uh, Amazon uh, did it deliberately, sort of did a Ryan Johnson just to piss everybody off and just, you know, screw things up. So uh you know, mm. they uh, they have no vested interest into the other ones, so they thought, well, screw it. We don't have to stick with your uh, plans. Let's do something. You do wonder if there are writers for Picard saying, oh, yes, I want to make a reference to New Vulcan, and whoever the producer are going, no, you can't do that because that's like someone else's movies. You know, even though it's the same franchise, um, they're, they're saying, no, 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 it's now got to be just Vulcan itself. Vulcan has always been there. It's never never disappeared, never been blown up. And you go, well, hang on. In these movies, it did get blown up. We see it as a big thing of the movie, right? They're blowing up the fucking planet. and the it's, it's a big thing. You know, you can't just pretend it didn't happen because it did happen. All these fans saw it and made hundreds of millions of dollars. You can't just pretend that it just wasn't the case. So uh, it wasn't like a holodeck experiment or something like that. So, uh, yeah, and, and this is frustrating because you're right. Different companies are making these shows, and you're right, they're not – talking to each other i think mps mentioned this earlier and uh and and it's it, for the fans it makes no sense it's just like ruining what was once upon a time a good free-flowing continuity and uh yeah as i said earlier i'm sure that there are fans there's two camps saying well this happened or that happened so there you go well here's the question uh, i know daniel's suggesting that they're both made by cbs and maybe they are i'm not 100 percent sure off the top of my head but in the time where they were shooting next gen DS9 and Voyager, they're all set at Paramount Studios. So, you know, you could have almost had like a production meeting once a week or month to say, hey, this is where we're going with here and here. You know, Vo um, next gen's finishing. So we'll take two of your actors and chuck them into DS9. Uh, and then Voyager can continue on. And then when it comes back, we can make reference in the movies. But here, in, in the current situation, remembering that Star Wars has the dedicated team because it's still under Lucasfilm. Yeah. Even though Disney had bought it, it's still under Lucasfilm, and they had to get that because of, of all the material. Um, it just doesn't seem like they have a team here yeah. in place or that there's any sort of prospect for a future team to come in place, which, again, doesn't make any sense. So what could happen now? Let's see, let's work on the assumption that, you know, uh, CBS, whoever, said, no, 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 the films don't count, right? We're just following the original prime timeline. I want everybody to pay attention to what I'm saying. I don't mean you two. I mean whoever's reading this stuff, right? What if, if that's the case, then that does not stop someone else walking and going, let's make a brand new Star Trek movie where we blow the shit out of everybody, right? 
like the Earth is destroyed, okay? And everybody's just flying around in spaceships. And, of course, Star Trek fans would be up in arms over that, saying you can't do that. So, well, yeah, actually, we can because they did it in these films back here, all right? And we got away with it. We blew up Vulcan, killed Amanda and whatever else, and no one seems to have cared. So let's make a brand new Star Trek movie where the whole thing is set on a space station in a, out in space. Earth is destroyed. The United Federation of Planets never existed. It's all been blown to the Scheisenhausen. There's our movie. There's Star Trek, the brand new whatever, right? And, of course, fans would just wouldn't be able to cope with that. But you Actually, could do it because the precedent has already been set where you can make significant changes to the timeline that other shows are not going to follow. And I reckon that would just cause a huge uproar. But... Uh, that's the reason why I think you can't just ignore what some other product has, has done. You just can't because at that risk it'll happen again. Sorry, Jeffro. I've got two words for you that would basically answer everything there and more. What? Mirror universe. Yeah, that's but it's it. not it's mirror universe. Mirror universe. Yeah. It's like, you know, you don't need to know anything more. Yeah, exactly right. So uh, I, I, I think yeah. doing a whole mirror universe series would be awesome, but I don't think you could cut it. I just don't know how long it could last. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, when you're in the Mirror Universe, you know you're in the Mirror Universe. So clearly if they're doing a new show and said, oh, no, no, we're going to set it like three, like we're just going to reboot it again. All, you know, it's the original cast, not the original cast, the original characters, Kirk, Spock and all those guys, and we're just going to blow up the earth, right? And it's just like, well, because you can, because you know, you've set this precedent. Sorry, MPS, I cut you off, mate. I was going to say, one thing that sort of gets me about the fact that Picard is set how far in front of the new three films, Discovery, uh, Beyond and, and, oh, and all that? It's like 100 and something years, like 150 yeah. years. Like. See, those three original films from 2009 have shot themselves in the foot with having too much technology in them. Because if you think about it from another point of view, you can't actually increase your technology for Picard because we don't know what's going to happen that far in front. The difference between the original series and next gen the technology was was better you know like there was very basic stuff and now there was you know you weren't doing certain things in the original series that you could do in next gen but they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that so if they do another series that's after picard they have to up the tech significantly and i don't know if you can do that so the series i would suggest would actually have to sit between uh beyond and what what would have been the next generation so mm. otherwise tech just is is becomes too far advanced that we're not going to be able to comprehend what could potentially happened yeah yeah i like uh, what Anne said the volons thoughts thought so that's a nice babylon 5 reference and mirror universe where everyone is dressed 100 percent sexier and have beards yeah that seems to be the go isn't it so uh very good funny yeah. enough all this complete chaos good old enterprise got out of it scot-free because that took place before discovery and uh They've got no impact whatsoever. So you can keep watching Enterprise. No problems at all there, Kitty. So uh, there you go. Um, but, yeah, if you're ever watching all the all the old series, Next Gen, DS9, you go, eh, am I watching a version where Vulcan exists or it doesn't exist? So uh, I don't know. It's enough to do your head in. So, But, anyway, there's a whole lot of Star Trek stuff coming out at the moment. It's a little bit out of control. I agree with Colin. They have the potential of making a real meal of this if they're not careful. Um, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and uh, I guess in coming months we'll see how it all transpires with the Discovery Season 3 and Picard Season 2. And uh, and I agree with whoever it was wrote earlier. Section 31, if it does, that would be a good one to see, actually. It would be good to see what they do with that. Hey, I wonder if Section 31 will, you know, because it's said in the Discovery pro pre, we think, pre-original series timeline, <laughs> does Vulcan exist or not? So, uh, oh, golly, let's uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. Hey? So there you go. Very good. I think it's about time. It's 9.30. I just I really had to get that off my chest. I feel so much better now. It's like it's I'm stuck at home. <laughs> We're all, look, I've got nowhere to go. you got to just let this stuff out of your head because after watching Picard, I was thinking, hang on, does Vulcan exist or not exist? And I'm looking for references and they didn't say anything. And oh, it's just killing me. So uh, there you go. And you need an eye patch when you're in the mirror universe. I love it. So there you go. All right. So we're going to wrap this episode up. Uh, and uh, you're a bit late in the game. You have to stand up and show us your T-shirt again there. Uh, Jeffrey, I'll give you a full screen, dude. So uh, there we go. There, there we go. go. I reject your reality and substitute my own. Yep, very good. How good is that? Very, very cool. All right, any last words before we buzz off, lads? Uh, Jeffrey, anything else you want to say, man? Yeah, I um, really enjoyed the uh, the timeline. I didn't realise Voyager was so far out from the rest of the other shows, so that was very interesting to sort of uh, see that. Oh, it overlapped the start of... Uh, yeah. it overlapped 
a little bit with DS9 because, um, yeah, because they're doing the marquee and the Badlands and all the rest of it. So, but, uh, um, yes. Okay. And uh, all I can say is um, live long and prosper, whatever it is. <laughs> Hang on. Are you living long? Like, I can't, can't do, do it. it. I'm not a Vulcan. Well, Oh, seriously, it's enough to do your head in. When you watch Star Trek Next, Next Kitties, have a, just keep that in your back of your mind, all right? Does it exist or not? What happened to Amanda? Is she there or not? So there you go. Very good. I wonder if someone's going to do a quick digital version of um, Search for Spock and they just take Amanda out and replace her with a different actress and she's like like Amanda's auntie or something. So because uh, Amanda's dead, that's the, that's the deal. All right. Uh, all right, so we'll leave you to it. And remember, see you next week for some Star Wars talking and we will, uh, in, the, in, the inter in the interim, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay. All right.